had a lovely day. Welcome back to Parenting Information Circle. This week, we will continue our interview with Dr. Arubai regarding COVID-19 uh, vaccination. He is a consultant gastroenterologist and an associate professor at UNSW. Welcome back, Doctor. I hope I introduced you correctly this time. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, it was um, lovely to have you um, back here again uh, to answer more questions regarding COVID-19 vaccines. Um, before we begin with the questions, a recap of what uh, Dr. Uh, Arubai explained in the last video. So he explained what it means to have COVID-19, especially uh, with this um, Delta variant, uh, why it is important to get vaccinated and what are some of the symptoms after getting vaccinated. And we'll look at more of these symptoms um, in this video, uh, in this uh, interview. And he also explained why it is uh, why the vaccines can be developed in a short amount of time and still be effective and efficient. So please go watch that video if you haven't. It was very informative. Continuing our you know, previous discussion surrounding the side effects that can arise from getting vaccinated. Um, I think this is one of the major concerns that the community um, has, particularly those who are still on the fence of uh, whether, you know, still on the first fence of whether to get vaccinated or not. Um, so the first question, Doctor, um, you mentioned that some of the side effects of AstraZeneca can cause, and although it is very rare, um, and that is thrombosis, I know I'm going to butcher this, thrombocytopenia syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that? All right, okay. Okay, uh, Kate, uh, thanks for the invitation and interview. Now, the, this very rare adverse effect of some of the vaccines, like the AstraZeneca one, is simply immune response triggered by the vaccine, where two contradicting processes occur at the same time. Now, people know that the thrombosis is simply a clot, which block uh, a blood vessel. And this can happen in the chest, in the lungs, in the legs, in the abdomen, and in the brain. Now, in this thrombocytopenic thrombosis syndrome, which is related to AstraZeneca vaccine, the clotting process occurred together with another process, which is the drop in the count of the platelets. The platelets uh, are the blood constituents, the blood cells which are responsible for stopping bleeding. So, say so they, to some extent, their presence help in uh, uh, preventing the bleeding from going on. But in this response and this very rare adverse effect of AstraZeneca, both can occur together. So we get a process where we are prone to bleeding and at the same time we have blockage of certain blood vessels in the body, which makes the treatment very difficult. Now, I would like to mention that first, this is an immune process. That's why it is different from the clotting which occur commonly among people. Every now and then we hear about clotting in the leg, the venous thrombosis, clotting in the lungs, the uh, pulmonary embolism. Mm -hmm. We hear about this, but these occur separately. That's why people who had clotting in the heart, in the lungs, in the leg, are still able to have the AstraZeneca. Oh. They are not at high risk of having this immune response. No, they have nothing to do with this because it is totally separate thing. That's one. Two, it is extremely rare uh, um, adverse effect. It's in the region of one case in every 100,000 of the vaccinated people with the AstraZeneca. And it is mainly under the age of 60. So above the age of 60, it is rare. That's one thing. Under the age of 60, it's mainly between the age of 30 and 50. 
So it's not even common among young people, right? So that's about the occurrence of. Where about these occurs? Where about the clotting here? They can occur in the brain where we have what we call it the cerebral venous sinus where it's blocked. And this is the most risky one. But they can occur also in the lungs, in the abdomen, in the veins of the abdomen and in the legs, like the ordinary clotting. So not all of them are serious. Only the one which occurred mainly in the brains are serious. Now we know after all this experience that we can diagnose these early. We have a very good test available in our hospital to diagnose this problem early, that one. Two, we have a very good treatment for this problem if it occurs, a very good treatment. We call it intravenous immunoglobulin. We can get it and our hospital, they, they use it now. I would like to mention also that COVID-19 itself caused this process, this is thrombocytopenic thrombosis syndrome, 10 times more than, um, than the AstraZeneca. So if you, if, you, if you are not vaccinated and you get the COVID-19, then you are at risk of this problem 10 times more than the risk of the, of the AstraZeneca. And now COVID-19 is very common. Every one of us are, 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 is exposed and we, can, we see it now in children, in young people and in all ages. So this is, this is uh, I think, the main point in focusing on getting the, the vaccine. Now, most people right now, they can get the Pfizer and probably from now on the Moderna for, for the vaccination before the age of 60. And our experience, by the way, our experience in Australia, for those who are above the age of 60, it's extremely rare adverse effect. Thanks, Doctor. Yep. That was fantastic. Also, I, I, this is not in the, um, in the interview. Uh, I just wanted to know, do they have to go, um, do they have to take blood thinners if they take um, the vaccine? No, they, they don't. You can add this one. They don't need to be on blood thinner, but when they are treated, they might give them blood thinner. Oh, okay. So the blood thinner doesn't prevent the problem. Right. Well, you know why? Because blood thinners make the risk of bleeding high because the platelet is, is, is low. Mm -hmm. So blood thinners, what makes it makes the platelets even less. Right, okay. okay. And this increases the risk. So we don't use a prophylactic. We don't use mm -hmm. something to prevent it. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Thanks, Doctor. Okay. Um, so, Doctor, how about for pregnant women? Will the vaccine affect the mother or the baby in any way, shape or form? Sure. Um, let me first explain that we consider pregnant women as a priority group for the vaccination. And the reason why is that uh, the pregnant women is in a sense have less immunity than non-pregnant women or, or men. And the reason why is that the, the, the immune system of the pregnant woman just adjusts itself so that it is less active to prevent rejecting the fetus because the fetus contain what's considered as a foreign body, which is the sperm of the father. This is a foreign body. So if our immune system attack this foreign body, because it comes from outside, mm -hmm. then the, the, the pregnancy will end with a miscarriage. So the immune system is already uh, adjusted. So it is less active, which means if a COVID-19 attack the woman, she will be at a higher risk during the pregnancy and the fetus itself will be at much higher risk for miscarriage or all the complication of pregnancy. So that is one. So women need, a pregnant woman needs the vaccine more than non-pregnant women. For the safety, both the experiments and the, the, the real world data from the hundred millions of women used the vaccines indicates that this vaccine 
is safe in pregnancy and the range of side effects or adverse effects in pregnant women is the same, exactly the same as the range of side effects in non-pregnant women or in, in men. Now, in pregnant women, no AstraZeneca is used. The, the vaccine used in pregnant women is the Pfizer or Moderna. And in Australia, we use the Pfizer for this purpose. This vaccination of the woman means a vaccination of the fetus at the same time. Uh, time. Mm -hmm. So we okay. have a vaccination of two person for one for one vaccine. Right. So again, it is it is extremely safe, and there is no issues with that. This is by our Australian experience and by the world uh, experience. And I invite, I call upon all our pregnant women is to mm -hmm. consider that as part of her antenatal care. So, Doctor, um, so moving on from, uh, you know, pregnancy, um, do COVID-19 affect, also affect breastfeeding as well? Well, uh, COVID-19, uh, yes, can affect the, the child, the process of breastfeeding. The vaccine itself, if we talk about the vaccine vaccination for COVID-19, uh, it, it has no harm or side effects uh, to, the, to the baby during the process of breastfeeding, while the COVID-19 can be transmitted through this and the fetus can, can get it through the breastfeeding, which will be uh, obviously at high risk because this is very early development of the immune system. So, doctor, if we choose to get vaccinated, how long does the um, the vaccine protect us from catching COVID nineteen? Do we get need to get get it annually? Do we need to get booster shots? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, vaccination in general uh, have uh, have a certain time to stay at the same level of efficacy. All vaccines. It drops in their efficacy with time, the wane of the of the immune process there. We know that from influenza, for example, because influenza vaccine need to be taken every year. We know that also from other vaccines, the vaccine for the hepatitis B uh, virus, for example, after the first three doses, we need to check it every five years, not every year, every five years, and we might find the level of immunity low, then a booster dose is given. Right. So far, we don't have long experience with the, with the COVID-19, but we know for sure that the level of immunity gained by the two doses of vaccination can last at least up to six months. It might be more, it might be less, but this is the rough range because we're dealing with almost a new disease, which is just all 18 months in total there. And the vaccination process started virtually from late last year and early this year. But we know for sure that they are helpful in protecting us up to six months. What happened after six months? Now, now, with the good evidence from big centers in state, United States and Britain, Europe, China, we know that there is a need for a booster dose after uh, the six months. And in some area where they have plenty of supply, like for example, America, they start uh, giving the booster dose. Now, this need to be also taken in the context of the supply and availability. So we need first to vaccinate the community in general before we consider, consider a booster dose for us. Because even after six months, the person is still protected, have some protection. So it's not a zero immunity after six months. No, no, it's a partial immunity. So. Once the community, once we have a community immunity there, 
then the consideration for the booster dose uh, uh, can be implemented. Okay, and this is for both um, for all and, yes, oh, yes. Okay, at least six, so months. six months is for for all the current COVID-19 vaccines. Interesting. Um, so the last question, Doctor, you know, because this is a parenting Facebook page, uh, we're wondering if children, by children I mean those who are 12 to 15, do they need to get vaccinated or, you know, is it safe for them? Yep, yep. Now, with the, with the change in the whole pattern of the disease due to the appearance of variants like Delta variants, we know now this wave of the disease that uh, young people are at risk of having the disease and they are also at risk of having the severe form and manifestation of this disease and some of them that they are lying now in the in the intensive care units in the in the intensive care units we have some young people some teenagers, people in their 20s, something which didn't happen last year in the, in the first wave of the Wuhan version of the virus. So they are at increasing risk. And in fact, they will be the main group at risk because most of the community will be vaccinated. That's why there is a need to vaccinate them to protect them first and to prevent having them as a source of the infection to their families and their uh, peers. So there is a need to do it. That's one. Two, the world experience, say we have, we have countries which troubled with this disease much, much more in number than Australia. In America, Britain, Europe, they, they have a huge number of in cases of infection. So they have a lot of data about the safety of using this vaccine between the age of 12 and the age of 15. And that's why the TGA, which is the authority to approve medicines and vaccines here in Australia, gave a provisional approval for the visor to be uh, used in this age group. Right. Okay, so Pfizer only for... Pfizer only, it is yeah. Pfizer. Okay, right. So, um, Dr. Aribe, thank you so much for giving us some a bit of your time and answering yeah. our COVID-19 questions. Yeah. I'm sure the information that you provided us will definitely assist um, the yeah. viewers mm -hmm. who are deciding to whether, you know, to get vaccinated or not. And um, to those who do wish to get vaccinated, vaccinated head over to uh, the Department of Health website and check for your eligibility and I'm sure um, it's 12 years and over over I think they're eligible for the vaccination um, if the major vaccination clinics are full or if there's a long wait you can always get vaccinated at your local medical center or at um, some pharmacies you can download hot doc H-O-T-D-O-C uh, onto your phone. It's also a website where you can uh, book an appointment for to, uh, to get the either the uh, AstraZeneca or the Pfizer vaccines in your uh, local area. And, and if you want more information, please log on to um, trusted websites. Web websites. I just want to um, emphasize this, such as you know, Health New South Wales Health and uh, Keep a lookout for government recommendations. I know it might be easier to just scroll through Twitter or Facebook to get information, but you know some of the articles and resources that are out there might not be very reliable. Or uh, you, you can always go and consult with your local GP for more information. Um, but yeah, thank you, doctor, and you know, we hope that you can join us for um, us on the Parenting Information Circle in the future again. Thank you. Thanks.